I stand with Zambia YouTube channel. My name is Mwansa. This channel is not affiliated with any political party, but it is 100% affiliated with being a Zambian. So in the news this past week, week and a half, we've been hearing things from Nawakwi talking about privatization, which happened back in the 90s. Um, the whole privatization thing was a total fiasco. All you have to do is Google it, okay? Find out the information about what really went down at that time. And um, I wasn't going to comment on it because honestly, I just felt like, what is this distraction? Like seriously, there's so much going on in the country right now. Like this is a total distraction. What are they up to? You know, so I was not going to comment on it. I'm working on a completely different project as we speak. But then I saw the government statement issued by Dora Celia, where she's, where on behalf of the government, you know, signed the letter. Uh, there, she's saying, you know, these allegations, the, go the government are disturbed with the allegations. And she, she says all these other things. And the nation must know. We will investigate and see what's really going on. And I'm like, ah. Right. So I'm like, okay, this is serious. What are these guys doing? Because I have family in Zambia and I ain't not trying to have my family be caught up in civil unrest, okay? Because you, you, you just want to arrest somebody for no reason. Like, let's just go through the process. Let's just go through the democratic process. Let everybody have a fair share. That's all I'm saying, right? So I'm like, okay, if you want to talk about it, Let's talk about it. This video is going to inform you of everything that we know to date, okay, of what Doris Lee has done and what Nawakwe have done because it's just a bunch of noise. So if we're going to make noise about somebody, then let's talk about it all. So I'm going to bring out in this video some things that maybe you already knew about, some things that you might have not known about, and say, well, why are you bringing it up? Well, you know what? If you're going to talk about somebody, then let's talk about yourself as well, because you cannot be the beacon of integrity and the beacon of um, uh, moral standing when, like, the entire, even the president said my ministers are corrupt and he does nothing about it. So if we're going to talk about wrongdoing and what's really in the public interest, then let's talk about the people who we have in government that are leading us. Let's talk about some of the political leaders who are aspiring to be in the seat of leadership. That's what this video is about. Let's get into it. In April 2012, Dora Celia was charged and arrested for abuse of authority. The abuse of authority occurred when she served as Transport and Communications Minister under the MMD government of Rupia Banda. The story is that the National Airports Corporation had given a tender to Thales Air System South Africa to supply, deliver, install and commission new radar equipment for the airports. The managing director of the National Airports Corporation, Mr. Mistala, pretty much told the court that one day he received a letter which was directed to the president of Celex. And Celex is a, another airspace radar provider company. And in that letter, Ms. Celia is telling the president of Celex, thank you for your offer to prepare our radar systems for free. I accept on behalf of the government of Zambia in my capacity as the transport and communications minister, we accept your free offer. Mr. Mistala says a second letter 
was sent to him, but this time via the civil aviation director, saying that Miss Celia is more than happy to have the uh, company Celex fix our radar systems for free. He testifies a third letter was sent to him, this time saying, allow the team from Celex to fix the radar systems for free. So Mr. Mistella says, okay, let's just let them do it. The team who were actually from Italy said, we'll get the job done in two weeks. Five months later, nothing's happened. Celex then informed Mr. Mistella, the managing director of National Airports Cooperation, that they would need to pay them 1.6 million euros in order to replace the systems. Mr. Mistella informed the court that the equipment had never worked and that the repair was not brought to the operational status as indicated by Ms. Celia. Now this was a conflict because Ms. Celia had directed the cancellation of the duly awarded tender that was given to Thames Air Systems introducing Celex as someone, as a company who were gonna do it for free. And then all of a sudden, they now say, you need to pay us 1.6 million pounds. This is where the managing director, Mr. Mistala, raises the flag and the issue ends up in court. This case began in 2012 under Michael Sata's government. So what happened to the case? Well, Dora Celia, was acquitted in 2017 under Edgar Lungu's Patriotic Front government. In 2017, Savia Chimba informed the nation of Zambia that an investigation was going on in Malawi that was in the national interest of Zambia. What happened was that the a company called Transglobe Export Produce had the Minister of Agriculture in Malawi, Mr. Chaponda, get business in order for Transglobe to transport 50,000 metric tons of maize to Malawi. The committee who was investigating this found that Transglobe were awarded a export permit by the Minister of Agriculture in Zambia the Minister of Agriculture at that time, Dora Celia. Transglobe did not qualify for an export permit because they were not a registered taxpayer in Zambia. In 2016, the Patriotic Front government under Edgar Lungu placed a ban on the export of maize. So surprisingly, we find out that maize had been transported to Malawi whilst this ban was going on. So this disadvantaged local maize producers who were stuck with maize and they couldn't sell it. Meanwhile, the ban had been lifted to put maize inside Malawi. Now the argument that came forth, I think the official response from the government was that Zambia had lifted the ban temporarily to assist with the humanitarian hunger crisis. But the Malawian officials who were investigating this disagreed. But there are questions around that, that why do we have to rush? Because you remember that the maize that they were buying was not the maize that we needed for humanitarian uh, 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 assistance. It was the maize that we needed for uh, commercial purposes, the maize that we wanted to sell, the maize that you and me would go to an ad bank and buy. So did we really have to do that in a, in, a, in a hasty manner like that? Those are the questions that you and me should ask. Um, um, the minister was involved big time. Uh, when he appeared, this is his own testimony. He said uh, suppliers or people kept coming to him when it was found out that there was need to supply maize to Admark. People came to, he to him to say, can we supply maize? Can we do ABCD? Can we do that? He said it, that people were coming to him. Now this is very uh, unusual. How would someone, if I want to supply something, how, how, why would I go to the minister? 
instead of going to the technocrats in that ministry. So that's why we're saying that he played a big role in deciding who should supply, right? And he actually said, um, at one moment, uh, Transglobe came to him and said, we want to supply a maze. And he said, okay, um, because he, uh, this maze is coming from Zambia, can you go to Zambia? That's what the minister said himself. So that's why we're saying that the, he was actually the one authorizing who should supply a maze. And remember, the name of Transglobe, we never knew about it the two weeks, the first two weeks that we did the investigation in Malawi. We only found out when we went to Zambia. And in fact, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture in Zambia uh, um, just reviewed this to us unknowingly that the, there was this other player, that the 10,000 metric tons was supposed to, that was supposed to be shipped from Zambia to Malawi, 50% of that had actually been given to Transglobe. Now which, we is a, which is quite a tonnage. Big time. So we checked through the documents. There was nowhere, nowhere uh, Transglobal had a contact with anyone. The procedures were flouted, broken, because they had to do this because there was a sense of urgency in the country. There was hunger looming. Uh, but we are saying the, the mains that we are buying is not going to be given to the poor uh, Malawian out there who cannot f afford a 50 kg buy. Mm -hmm. It was going to be given it was going to be stuck in the ad bank tables for people to buy. So the people that buy, there's no sense of urgency whatsoever. So what he was saying was not, was not correct. The situation was so intense that the Minister of Agriculture's office was conveniently set on fire during the investigations. Back in Zambia, the Chief Justice dismissed a petition to have a probe set up over the role Dora Celia as Minister of Agriculture played in the Maysgate scandal. People like Antonio Mwanza, who was the spokesperson for FDD at the time, said this, with such evidence, plus other details in the report, it is inconceivable that the Chief Justice could claim that there was lack of evidence to prosecute the matter. It is such suspicious decisions by our courts that have resulted in the public's loss of confidence in the judiciary. Justice must not only be done, but it must be seen to be done. It is clear in our judicial system that the rich and connected seem to be untouchable for serious crimes they're committing while the poor and less influential are rotting in jail for petty crimes. As for Madame Celia, she should know that Mulandu, Suwola, Antonio Mwanza, FDD spokesperson. Now, the Minister of Agriculture was fired to pave way for the investigations. When the case went to court, guess what? He was acquitted. That's right. Meanwhile, in another development, Republican President Michael Sata has revealed that government will soon release the findings on the sale of the former Parastato Telecom, Zamtel. This follows an investigation into the partial privatization of Zamtel, which the president made after assuming Republican presidency. And the report is underway on the sale, on the fraud rate or corrupt sale of Zamtel, which very shortly, as soon as we have the report, which the Honorable Minister as he stood with his colleagues, will be able to make it. So while Ms. Celia did not have to face the tribunal in 2017, she did face the tribunal in 2013. This is when she had to answer for her role in the sale of Zamtel. Ms. Celia, acting as Minister of Transport and Communications, had commissioned the company known as RP Capital Partners, and their role was to evaluate Zamtel's assets ahead of its privatization. Having learned the bitter lessons from the failed privatizations in mining and textile sectors, the majority of Zambians were not trying to hear that Zamtel was going to fall victim to privatization again, and many had suggested that the company should be recapitalized through offloading of shares to the public on the Lusaka Stock Exchange, 
a move that had already been taken by um, the private mobile phone operator Celtel. But the government rejected this and insisted that Zamtel is insolvent and should be sold off quickly to avoid liquidation. But public opinion is that the political interference is largely to blame for the current state of the company. Just like the other companies, Zane and Zaya and MTN are making money and are paying taxes to government. The taxes used to make schools, to build roads, to build clinics, but Zamtel is not. So if we want to make a plan where Zamtel one day should be able to pay us taxes so that we can do the same roads we are talking about and somebody says no, we are going to nationalize it and let it be the way it is in trouble today so that it can die. I mean surely you should ask yourself, is that reasonable thinking? Is that reasonable thinking? Because for you to develop, the money is not going to fall from the sky. You need to tax the private sector. You need to tax the, 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 the public workers. The public workers are only 400,000. That is not enough tax base to develop a nation. There were also concerns about the company that was doing the valuation, RP Capital of the Cayman Islands. This is because the evaluation report of Zamtel done by RP Capital was not made public. Zambia, Zambia, free we stand under the flag of our land. This is against the Public Procurement Act number 12 of 2008, which states that any sale of government asset or procurement of services would have to comply with the tender process. The tender process in this case was not complied with. When we evaluate this MOU, we have a copy of it here. It was issued on the basis of conversations, just in case you are not sure. Clause 1.1, based on our recent discussions, RRP Capital Partners hereby agrees to enter into a consultant's agreement with the government of Zambia. No bid document. So you couldn't evaluate this bid by RRP Capital Partners. Again, it's the tender process. It is here. Michael Sata, Hakainde, Jilema are talking too much. If we are talking on your behalf, because you are not privy to what we are privy to, maybe we are doing you a good service. We're doing the 12 million Zambia the good service against those that are raping the assets of this country. Zamtel is sold. At the time the valuation of Zamtel was being done, it was later revealed that Zamtel was going to have a value of $5 billion within two years, but the Zambian government had agreed to sell Zamtel for only $257 million. Michael Sata reverses the sale of Zamtel. He cancels the sale, cancels the contract, and it is, even today, in the hand of the Zambian government. It's a state-owned enterprise. Now, listen, there's more. Michael Sata also reversed the sale that Doris Salia did in her capacity as minister to South Africa's first RAND group. They sold Finance Bank of Zambia for $5.4 million. So what happened to the case? Well, Michael Sata dies in 2014, and so does the tribunal. Life goes on. In 1997, while Edith Nawakri was the finance minister, she had paid close to $7.8 million to a Canadian-based Carlington sales company. This company was associated with a Mr. Ari Ben Menashe. They were to supply 50,000 metric tons of maize to Zambia, which was never delivered. An additional $2 million was allegedly paid to Ben Menashe so that his public relations company could lobby for investments in Zambian mines. Now, this is while Nawakwi was finance minister under Chuluba. 
The Zambian government took the case to the London Court of International Arbitration, and they ruled in favor of Zambia, ordering Ben Menashe's Carlington Sales Company to pay Zambia $6 million plus interest. In 1999, Carlington Sales Company sued the Zambian government for breach of contract over the sale of some assets of the Zambia Consolidated Copper Mine. The Zambian government, through Finance Minister Edith Nawapwe, entered into a contract with Carlington Sales Company involving the sale of assets belonging to ZCCM. The Zambian government allegedly failed to honor the contract, forcing Carlington to sue for damages in the High Court of London. We're almost at the end of the video, and I just wanted to let you know about something that's really, really important. While in court, Ben Menashe claimed under oath that he was forced to bribe many Zambians and claimed that the former opposition politician, Paul Tembo, was murdered because he was going to testify on his behalf. Who was Paul Tembo? Paul Tembo was the former campaign manager of President Chiluba. He was due to give evidence in a corruption investigation against three government ministers. These ministers were the Finance Minister Katele Kalumba, Home Affairs Minister Peter Machungwa, and Works and Supply Minister Gordon Mandandi, who had illegally used $625,000 of state money to finance a ruling party convention. It had only been a month that Tembo quit the ruling MMD party after he lost elections to be the party's vice president by one vote. So he went and joined the new opposition party, the Forum for Development and Democracy, FDD. Around 3 a.m. on the day Paul Temba was meant to go and give evidence at the committee, at the parliamentary committee. He was shot in the head by killers who stormed into his room. The three killers forced their way into the compound, roughed him up, led him to his bed, and made him lie on it. They shot him in the back of the head and made his wife watch. His wife was originally arrested for the murder, but she maintained her innocence to say that there were two men who came in in suits and they shot my husband. They were witnesses, the two maids and the arresting officer who saw the crime scene at the time. However, these three witnesses were later all killed. If there's anybody who should understand the value of democracy, it's Edith Nawakwe, because this man, Mr. Tembo, left MMD to join FDD, the party that she's president of. She was so scared at the time that she went to ask for protection from the courts because she believes they were trying to kill her too. So I'm so glad that you have watched up to the end of this um, documentary. Go forward knowing who the people are that are speaking into your life and make your own informed decisions. This is I Stand With Zambia YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Stay safe and stand with Zambia.